Good morning, everyone. Welcome as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, cycle E. And uh, this Sunday's gospel is about a man born blind. So let us listen to a shorter version of the gospel. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents for him to have been born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. He was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made a piece with a spittle, put this over the eyes of the blind man, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name which means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. His neighbors and people who had earlier seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how do your eyes come to be open? The man called Jesus, he answered, made a piece, daubed my eyes with it, and said to me, Go and wash at Siloam. So I went, and when I washed, I could see. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus had made a piece and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, He put a piece on my eyes, and I washed, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself, now that he has opened your eyes? He is a prophet, replied the man. Are you trying to teach us, they replied, and you a sinner through and through since you were born, and they drove him away. Jesus heard they had driven him away, and when he found him, said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him, he is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believed, and worshipped him. Some years ago, my dear friends, I saw a wonderful movie, which I, I saw several times, called The Name of the Rose, starring Sean Connery as an Augustinian monk. And the background to the movie is the rediscovery of the works of Aristotle. And it brought into the philosophical world that uh, idea of a good life, a happy life. Happiness, therefore, and a certain amount of lightheartedness was part of the import of that discovery, except that it challenged a certain ethos in the church at that time. And that ethos was dominated by Augustinian spirituality which was more inclined towards original sin, that we have been dominated by sin, we can do very little good, and things like that. And so there was a clash between this Franciscan monk uh, who encountered the elderly Augustinian monk. And in a very dramatic scene, we have uh, the Augustinian monk sitting, doing his scribal work, and then he looks up at Sean Connery and says very angrily, Who do you think you are to come in here and disturb our sorrow with idle banter? And this reminds me of the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. And Nietzsche says that Christians say that they are saved, but do their faces look it? In a conversation, some time ago at a priest meeting, Father Dwight Merrick also said something similar. He said, Christians say that they are saved, but sometimes their heart need to inform their faces. And so, my dear friends, today's gospel reminds us of what an encounter with Jesus can do for us. 
And that is what happens, and it has been happening since last Sunday, where we had this encounter of the Samaritan woman with Jesus. And it is as if some of the features of that story that we see is uh, continued in today's gospel. If we throw our minds back a bit at the Samaritan woman, we notice certain features about her. For instance, initially she is uneasy, but then as she enters the conversation with Jesus, she becomes more relaxed. We notice that she is isolated, but in the conversation with Jesus, she becomes open to the other. We notice that she is minding her own business, and then the encounter with Jesus makes her go out and talk to people in the community. And then she was probably morose by herself at the well, and we notice that the encounter with Jesus fills her with joy. And she goes out and she says, come, let me tell you, come and see this man who has told me everything that I have ever done. So we see what that deep encounter of Jesus does. It changes us, and it also changes the man born blind. He is told by Jesus to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And this has very strong baptismal imagery. The washing ought to remind us of the baptismal washing, in which, as adults, we are washed free from every trace of sin and offered a new life in Christ. And so the man was being offered that. He was being offered a new life in Christ. And he had to make that act of faith. He had to trust. And so Jesus told him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And so he went and he washed in the pool of Siloam. And then presto, he could see. And one can try to imagine the scene as Ignatian spirituality invites us to. Try to imagine what went on there. Details that are not given in the gospel passage. So, for instance, we can imagine that the man's face lights up as if not only his sight has been restored, but his smile has been restored. His whole personality lights up. He is a changed man. And we see this in some of the comments that the people make about him. They say, for instance, that, is he the man? We don't think he's the man. And then some others say, he looks like him, but we're not sure. And then the man has to declare, I am the man. As if to say in one breath, I am that person, and yet I am not that person. I am someone different, somewhat different. And that is why you cannot recognize me or have your doubts, because even in my countenance, I look different. I feel happier. I feel unburdened. I am a new man in Christ. And... Uh, that, my dear friends, is uh, very much mindful. We, it makes us remember the first piece of writing of Pope Francis, which is Evangelii Gaudium, Joy of the Gospel. And Pope Francis says very early on in Joy of the Gospel, number three, that uh, I invite every Christian, note well, not every Catholic, I invite every Christian. So already the Holy Father has that ecumenical concern that same uh, ecumenical concern that Jesus has in the gospel oriented towards community, towards other people, to the Samaritan woman, today the man born blind. And he says, I want every Christian to renew his or her personal encounter with Jesus Christ or to at least express an openness to encountering him. And I want you to do so unfailingly every single day. And so, my dear friends, in these times in which we live, more in close times, Jesus is inviting us to do exactly that, to encounter him more deeply and to do so every day and to use this lockdown that we are in as an opportunity for renewal and revival and for consolidating the domestic church, making the family, the domestic church, something stronger. But we have to recognize that there are naysayers along the way. And so there will be friends who say, well, why don't you go on the computer instead? Well, the bars are closed, but we have those friends, those peers, or so-called friends, those persons who would take us away from the true path, the path of light that we are following. And in the gospel, we see it. 
with, we see it with the neighbors, we see it with the crowd, we see it with the Jews. They are all trying to take the man off his path and away from his purpose. But he is happy that he can see. And he is looking not at the negative people, but he is looking at the new life that is offered to him in Christ. There is a little story told of two monks that are walking along a muddy path. And at the end of the, the walk, the older monk, his, uh, his uh, vestment, his cowl is, is unmuddied. But the young monk, his uh, cowl is muddied. And so he turns to the monk and said, how is it that when I look at my clothes, it is all dirty and muddy, and when I look at your clothes, it is not? And he says, that's because you are looking where the puddles of water are. I am looking for the dry spots. And so when we see in Jesus, we see anew. We are no longer blind. We see the world differently. We see life differently. We see other people differently. We see not only their imperfections, but we see their good. And so this time in which we are locked down, my dear friends, let us use it as an opportunity to see one another more closely as family members. Let us use it as a way to discover the sacred moment. The book of Hebrews tells us the word of God is something alive and active. Let that alive and active word operate in your lives as families at this time. Let it cut away all that is sinful. Let, us got, let it gather families to meditate on God's word and to enter into it in the home context in a way that we have not entered it when we are in church and when we are distracted. As we also think of blindness, my dear friends, we see very well the damage done by the coronavirus, and we can easily point out those damage. We can point to the high rate of infection. We can point to panic and fear. We can point to people dying. We can point to the sadness of people being buried without a funeral service. But at the same time, we have to ask ourselves, in the widest things of life, when it comes to nature, has this virus pointed out ways in which we, as a society, as a people, have also been blind? Have we been taking care of the earth? Have we been protecting our waters and rivers? Have we been preserving wildlife? Have we been grateful for the gifts God has given to us? Are we eating and drinking too much? Is our consumption pattern bringing upon us disease? And so may this Sunday when we think about blindness also remind us to look out at the world and to see how we have taken care of nature or not taken care of nature by our track record. We have not taken care of nature properly at all. We have taken care of ourselves. And let us ask the Lord to remove that blindness as I read to you a little something that has happened consequent to the lockdown that has taken place in various places, which is a blessing of nature. And it says, since the lockdown, the Venice Canal water has become clearer. The Italian coasts have dolphins uh, coming nearer. Japan has their room in the streets. Thailand, the same with monkeys. China has record-breaking pollution cuts. The earth is healing. And so we ask here, who has been the virus, COVID-19 or us? Let us, my dear friends, as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent, ask Almighty God to let us not be viruses to the earth, but rather let us be antibodies, healing ourselves, healing one another, and healing the earth, our common home. May God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday, and take care of one another so that others may take care of you. Thank you.